Welcome to Yoga at Home. My name is Laura with TC Fit. Thanks for joining me today. All you'll need for class is some flat floor space and a yoga mat or bath towel. To begin today, I invite you to lay down on your back, feet flat, knees bent. We begin with our breath. As you find your space on the floor, allow your hands, one to find your belly, and the other to find the base of your rib cage. Draw your breath in through your nose, feeling both your hands rise. And as you exhale, allow your hands to sink closer in, down towards your mat. Inhaling to expand. Exhale, allow yourself to settle. With each breath, I challenge you to keep your mind present. Aiming to keep your current thought in the moment that you're living in. You've carved out this time to practice yoga, and yoga is more than just moving and stretching your body. It's also being mindful, mindful of how you feel, mindful of how you breathe, and allowing yourself to be present physically and mentally. Challenge yourself to let go of whatever you were working on before this and whatever you have upcoming. For now, you just get to live right here in the moment that you're actually living in. Continue with five more breaths in the same position, noticing your belly rise, your hand lifts, filling every square inch of your lungs with breath and then releasing and relaxing. As you complete your fifth breath, draw your knees up and in towards your chest, grabbing a hold of the space just above your knees, and rock yourself from side to side. Using the pressure of your low back against your mat, we give ourselves a little self-massage. Placing pressure along the entire edge of where the base of our spine, the lower back, meets the top of our pelvis, sort of your belt line. Part of the beauty of yoga is you get to practice in the way that your body is each day. Today is a different day than yesterday. This moment might be different than the moment earlier in the day, and that's okay. Respect what your body has to offer, and do what feels right for you. If at any point during class you need a minute to just be still, take it. No judgment. Do what you need to do. From our side to side rock, let's allow one leg to lengthen long. Leaving one knee bent, draw the knee over and across and stretch your opposite arm out wide. Draw your knee back up and in. And pass the same knee off to the other hand. Allow your leg to fall out wide to the other side, to a frog leg. Do this again, passing your knee from right to left, left to right. Good, one more time out wide to the opposite side. And final time through with this leg. Only move to a point of tension, avoiding pain, 
letting your knee move out wide. Good, drop both knees up and in and we trade to the opposite leg. Letting one leg move long and taking up that knee over and across the body, reaching wide with one arm. And pass your knee back and across and out wide to the side. We'll take this two more times to each side. As you complete that, let's bring both knees back up and in. And again, last time, giving ourselves that little rock from side to side with our knees up and in towards our chest. You can either roll to your side and press yourself up, or you can continue to hang on to your knees and roll yourself up. And flip over, meeting on all fours. You're welcome to take fist for wrist, creating that long length through the wrist, or your fingers are spread flat, and move into cat and cow. Moving our spine movement in a new pattern, flexing and extending, warming up the body slowly. Inhaling into cow and exhaling, moving the spine into cat. Let's take three more passes through both cat and cow. Inhaling, moving with our breath, and exhaling, allowing the spine to round. From our cat cow, we bring our spine back into a straight or neutral position. And from here, we create balance, bringing the opposite arm and leg away, reaching long with right arm, left leg moving behind us, aiming to stay steady. right back into your mat where they came from, like you're putting your hand back into a wet concrete handprint. Stretch your arm and leg long, thinking of your spine as a broomstick, a little rod that is unable to bend, holding steady. Hand and knee return, and we'll move from side to side, stretching long and returning. Feeling energy from the tips of our fingers of our front hand to the very bottom of our foot on the leg that's behind us. Think about squeezing the muscles at the bottom of your hip through your glutes. Taking our last one on each side. Spinal balance. Let's bring our knees wide, big toes towards one another, and settle our hips back and down into child's pose. Child's pose is a great position to take if you need a moment of rest, a moment of still quiet. You're welcome to take this shape at any point during class. Notice your breath. Your rib cage is floating above your mat instead of resting on your mat. You can really notice how, our, how your breath moves inside your body. Just thinking about the way that this repetitive movement of life happens, what it feels like. We don't spend much time thinking about this movement inside our bodies throughout the rest of the day. So whenever we practice yoga, it's a great time to be present in that moment. Breath is what gives us life. Draw our shoulders forward out over our hands, making our way into a hack series. That's our high plank to low plank finding our cobra position or upward facing dog. And from here we press our hips up and back and into down dog. This first down dog of the day is always a little stiff, so feel free to pedal out your feet, give yourself a little room to wiggle. And settling into this shape, lots of length required through our ankles, 
through our hamstrings, hips reaching high, heels of our hands accepting the weight of our upper body. From here, we move into our sun salutation. On your next breath in, step or half your feet towards your hands, finding forward fold. For our first forward fold, we'll stay put in this shape. Or for our first sun salutation, excuse me, we'll stay put here for a moment, allowing our head and neck to just weigh heavy. Aiming to release tension from our upper back and neck. From our forward fold, we send our arms out wide, lifting our chest tall and finding mountain. Sweeping our arms around, sinking our hips back and down into chair pose. Sweep and reach tall. And from here, we swan dive, hinging at our hips, lifting halfway into monkey as we inhale and exhale, fold forward. Planting our hands, stepping or hopping the feet back and into high plank. Knees can be elevated or on the mat. Slow, controlled lower. Taking our cobra or upward facing dog. Either one of those two poses is good. And press up and back, down dog. Moving a little more swiftly through our sun salutation. On our next breath, we take a step or hop forward towards our hands, inhaling. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive up and into mountain. Exhale, sinking into chair. Inhale, sweeping or reaching high. Exhale, swan dive. Inhale, halfway lift, monkey. And exhale, fold. Inhale, stepping or hopping back into plank. Exhale, lower. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, press back, down dog. We take one more pass through. Inhale, step or hop forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive up into mountain. Exhale, sink into chair. Inhale, sweep and reach. Exhale, swan dive. Inhale, planting our hands, stepping or hopping the feet back. Exhale, slow lower. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. And exhale, press back, down dog. Shoulders are relaxed out of our ears. Moving into our warrior sequence. We begin with our right side. If you'd like to take three-legged dog before you step forward, you're welcome to do so, lengthening one leg. Feeling free to add a bend to the knee to create a lot of extra length through the front of our hips and our, our thigh. Stepping our right foot forward towards our thumbs. Our first shape today, airplane. Back leg long, heel elevated, chest hovering above the front leg, and wings out wide. Lots of strength to help hold this shape. Hold and breathe. From our airplane pose, we sweep our arms up, back heel spinning to find the mat into warrior one. Finding warrior two, arms parallel with our mat. Back kneecap reaching up towards our hip. Keeping our back legs steady and strong. Finding a peaceful warrior. Vision out over our front middle finger. And from warrior two, we flip our front palm, shift up and back into reverse warrior. We 
and hold for three more breaths. I challenge you to feel how that breath is inside your body in this shape. Notice things that don't get noticed in other parts of your day. From our reverse warrior, we cartwheel our arms back to our mat, left, right. Stepping back and taking our half series, high to low plank, cobra or up dog. And exhale, press back, down dog. Moving on to our left side, if you'd like to take three-legged dog, you're welcome to do so. Stretching the left leg tall, opening through the knee, through the hip. Drawing our knee towards our nose, finding airplane. Chest hovering, creating a long length from the crown of our head, through our spine, and down the back leg. There's lots of things that have to work here to help us stay steady. Our legs, our trunk, or our core, musculature through our hips, shoulders are drawn down, upper back is active. Sweeping our fingertips high, we find warrior one, back heel meeting our mat. Energy reaching our fingers tall, but our hips aiming to sink low. Front foot trying to stretch our mat forward, and the same with our back foot, but trying to stretch our mat backwards. From our warrior one, we settle into warrior two. Arms parallel with our mat shoulders out of our ears, hold and breathe, our front knee is aiming towards the front of the middle foot, oftentimes as we get tired our knee collapses inward, keeping our knee in line, from here we move into reverse warrior shift up and back, back arm landing on the back leg, warrior. We cartwheel the arms back to our mat. Right, left. And from here we step forward into forward fold. From our forward fold, I invite you to make your way up and into mountain in whatever manner sounds appealing to you, whether that is our reverse glory or reverse swan dive, a lifting of the chest, or you can roll your spine up, stacking yourself one vertebrae at a time. For this portion, you're going to face the camera. As you end up in mountain, pull your shoulders up and back. Allow yourself space across the front of your chest. Just finding that open feel. Inhaling to expand and exhale, allow yourself to come back to center. From here, we stretch our arms tall and take standing side bends. Reaching up and over and allowing the hip to move in the opposite direction of our hands. Feeling the stretch through our side body. The space from our shoulder on the side of our rib cage towards our hip. And you can take these at your own speed. Make one more pass between both right and left sides. From here, allow your hands to find heart center, your body's center of energy. Pressing them against one another, fingers spread wide.
From here, let's sink our hips back and find our chair pose. A little slight hinge to the hips as we tip our trunk forward, hips aiming to find an imaginary chair back and behind us, like a chair that's a kid size, it's too small, but it's back there somewhere. Our balance challenge for today's class is single-legged chair. So you've got a couple options and I'll demonstrate both. Pick a side, either side. I'm gonna start with balancing on my non-dominant leg. From here, we kickstand our front foot forward. And this is option A, keeping that heel anchored to the ground. Option B, lift, hold, and balance. Aim to stay steady. Nothing else moves other than the heel removing itself from the ground. Hold for three more breaths. Allowing your foot to plant and stretch tall into mountain. Standing side bend again. to each side. Roll the hands to find heart center. Fingers are spread wide and pressing against one another. Sinking our hips down into chair and kickstanding our front foot. Option A, stay here for single legged chair. Option B, elevate your heel. Take your pick. Single legged chair balanced chair. Hold and breathe. Find the mat with your foot and stretch tall into mountain. From our mountain pose, we swan dive forward, planting our hands, stepping our feet back and down, and taking our final half series of the day. High to low plank, cobra or up dog, and push the hips up and back and into down dog. My hope is this down dog feels a little different than the very first one. Hopefully a little bit more pliable, your body is warmer more able to find length in places where there was none before. From our down dog, I invite you to drop your knees to the mat. If you have the space, I'm going to encourage you to try this pose today. It's legs up the wall, um, and all you'll need is some flat wall space. And the best way to get into this, if you'd like to bring your mat over, you're welcome to do so. I've got carpet, so I'm going to Keep my mat where it is. I'm gonna lay down on your side with your rear end next to the wall and then cartwheel your legs up. So you get your sit bones absolutely as close to the wall as you're able. Give your arms a chance to spread wide and just enjoy. This is a great pose for relaxation. The pose that encourages blood flow back to our heart. As you hold this shape, just notice your breath. your mind present inside your body and allow yourself to be in the moment that you're living in. You can keep your feet straight up the wall if you'd like to add a hip, a hip opener element to this pose. You can allow your feet to fall wide moving into legs up the wall straddle. It's creating length along the inside edges. So 
the inner seam of the legs. Move in whatever range of motion is comfortable for you. to crunch your toes like you're a birdie trying to hold on to a little wire and really spreading your toes wide making them as far apart from each other as you can get them do that again scrunching your toes spreading them wide and from here we add movement to the foot so crunching your toes and also kind of creating a little pointed shape to your feet Adding a flex feel as you spread your toes apart, flattening the bottoms of your feet as much as you can. Crunching your toes and rounding your feet forward, making them go wide. Hopefully your feet are clean against the wall. I hope I don't leave feet marks against my wall. Good. And last time, flexing, pointing, pointing, flexing. If you've moved into straddle, you can draw your legs back up. And I invite you to stay as long as you'd like. You're welcome to stay here for your last few moments of your practice. Or if you, your feet are starting to fall asleep, you can spin them down and settle yourself back onto your mat. Your final Shavasana. Final Shavasana is our final relaxation. Shavasana translates as corpse pose from Sanskrit. It signifies the death of your yoga practice for today or for this session. And it's your chance to enjoy how your body feels, how your mind is, what your breath is like. Use this time to map your body taking notice of places that hold extra tension. Allow the space between your brows to relax. Notice your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Allow that space to be soft, loose. And fall into the gentle rhythmic rise of your belly and your lungs. and staying present, I challenge you to be here, in your breath, thinking of nothing other than your body for your next 10 inhales and exhales. And as you complete that, I encourage you to roll to your side for a few moments, spending some time side lying on your right, knees bent, arm under your head. And then as you're ready, you can press yourself into a seated position. But until then, enjoy, relax, and until we see each other again via the screen, namaste.